Okay, I wanted to post a couple more examples of recursive functions from CodeHS. Your assignment is going to be to do three problems from CodeHS. All three are really short. The idea of recursion is that it makes uh, a problem very simplistic, uh, as you saw with the Fibonacci sequence in the previous video. To calculate the Fibonacci numbers, all you got to do is program in, add the previous two numbers. You define a couple base cases, and you're done. So um, the times when you want to use recursion is when it makes the uh, makes attacking the problem uh, much simpler in uh, in execution. Uh, so I'm going to look at two problems with you here from Code HS as well. Uh, the first one is an example problem summary, where they're finding the sum of a series of numbers that are in an array. Now, you know how to do this using a for loop, and you should do this with a for loop. This is just an example of taking a larger problem and breaking it down into smaller and smaller problems, because that's what recursion is really about, is like in, with Fibonacci, you're saying, if I want the 10th Fibonacci number, I'm going to break it into smaller problems, the 9th and 8th Fibonacci numbers, and then each of those gets broken into smaller until you get into a, a base case. Um, so in this example, to add up the values in an array, we're going to take those numbers, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and to find the sum of those numbers, we're going to say that the sum uh, is whatever the current number is plus the sum of the rest of the numbers. So in this case, we'd be doing 1 plus finding the sum of two, three, four, and five. And then to calculate the sum of two, three, four, and five, that is just taking the sum of two plus the sum of three, four, and five. So you can see that we're breaking this down into smaller and smaller problems. And then, of course, the sum of 3, 4, and 5 is 3 plus the sum of the rest of the numbers. And then the sum of 4 and 5 is 4 plus the sum of the rest of the numbers. And then here would be your base case. If you've only got one number, you just return that sum or return that number. So sum 5 is going to return 5. So then we do 4 plus 5. So this uh, call right here, the sum of 4 plus 5, is going to return 9 because this returned 5. So 4 plus 5 is 9, which means 3 plus 9, right? Uh, the sum of 4 and 5 was 9. That returns 12. And so the sum of 3, 4, and 5 returns 12. So then 12 plus 2 is 14, and then the sum of these return 14, and 1 plus 14 is 15. So we break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down until it can't be broken down anymore, and then we will start returning answers. In the previous video, I talked about how when we ran that one, uh, when we switched the two lines of code, the printing and the calling, and how the stack worked its way back up. This is a really good example of that, where we reach the bottom uh, layer, and then we work our way back up, because the bottom one has to return an answer so that the next one up can return its answer, because they're all relying on each other. And that's, that's how all recursion works. So in uh, the actual code here, the base case uh, is if we reach an index uh, less than zero, because they're using indices here um, to actually do this. So they're starting from the other end with basically, uh, they're starting at the, at the five and working their way down. So in this case, they'd be saying add the five plus the rest of the numbers. And then that would add the four plus the rest of the numbers, then the three plus the rest of the numbers, and so on. Okay, the other example I wanted to look at was recursively finding the minimum value in an array. 
And again, this is something you would do with a for loop. These are just examples of breaking something down using recursion. You want to get lots of reps using recursion um, before you try to apply it to some bigger idea uh, where it is uh, more useful. Uh, so in this example, we're going to find the smallest value in an array list. Uh, and the idea here is that we look at a, a value at one end, and here they're starting from the back. And the idea is that either this number, 9, is the smallest number, or the smallest number is uh, the minimum value of the other numbers. So then, as we work our way down in this problem, we're going to be removing values from the end of the array list. Okay, they try to break this down for you as much as possible with the comments in the function. Um, the base case, uh, if you're asked to find the smallest value in a list, and you're going to break that list down into smaller and smaller pieces is if there's only one number left. If there's only one number in the list, you can say that. That is the smallest number. So we're going to check that as our base case. Every recursive function is basically going to start with an if statement because you, you can't just automatically recursively call the function every time because that will result in infinite recursion. So we're going to check to see if the size of the list that we were given is uh, 1. And if it is, we return that one value. So in this case, numbers.get zero. It's the only item in the list, thus it is the smallest item. Here's where this problem gets a little bit different. We're going to recursively call the function, but with a smaller list. So if we make it this far, if we make it past this, that means there are more than one number in the list. And we're going to recursively call the function and say, can you find the smallest value in this list that is um, smaller than the list I was given? So if I was given five numbers, I'm going to recursively call the function with only four numbers. And that is going to recursively call the function with only three numbers and so on and so on until we get down to a single number that can then say, here it is, here's the smallest value. But of course, this value needs to be compared with the minimums of all the other values. And we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, so we need to do a couple things here. We need to um, remove the last value and then call recursively the function with that smaller list. But of course, we need to have that last value. We need to store it so that it can be co compared with the remaining, the minimum of the remaining values. So it looks like this. Uh, I'm going to call it last, and I'm going to remove um, the very last item in the list, which would be at index numbers.size minus one. Remember, remove, when you take something out of an array list, it actually returns that value, so then I can store it. So that's nice and convenient there. And now I'm going to call um, the recursively the function, but I also need to get that result. The find min does return an answer, and so um, I'm going to make another variable called minimum and call find minimum with this smaller numbers list. So I'm going to be saving two values here, the last value that I was given, and then the minimum of all the other values I was given. But of course, to find the minimum of all the other values that you were given, it's going to recursively call and just do this again. And it's going to break it down into the last value of that list, and then the minimum of the rest of the numbers, and so on and so on, until we get down to one value. Okay, and then the last step here is the return. Um, we have two values that we're comparing. The last value in the list, either it is the smallest number, or the smallest number from the rest of the numbers is the smallest number. So we have two choices here. So if last is less than min, we're going to return last, because it is the smallest value of all the values. Otherwise, we will return now.
<clears throat> so again, base case, one value in the list. Recursive call, we um, break it down into a smaller subset of a problem. <clears throat> and then in this case, we saved some values so that we can make a decision on what to return. Return the last number in the list or the smallest value from the other numbers in the list. So notice no for loops required, not a lot of code. Um, it's just you got to wrap your head around this idea of calling uh, yourself. If you run this one, you can enter your own values. So I entered a bunch of values there, and then negative one to quits, and the minimum value I entered was one. And there you go.